was, well, as soon as I started speaking in public, I got a lot of emails, an incredible number of emails, mm -hmm. mostly from young men, some from men not that young, talking about their experiences. And it blew me away that the, and I know Jordan's talked about this too, but the, the amount of pain that there is out there, um, the number of young men who just want to, uh, they love women in most cases, they want to have a happy relationship. They've never intended to hurt or oppress anyone and yet they're told that even without intending to, they do. Just by looking at a young woman, you know, or asking her out on a date, they're doing some sort of violence. And the pain that that has caused and the uncertainty and the confusion and the resentment as well. It's, uh, you know, and some of these young men have themselves been abused. Their parents, sometimes their mothers have been abusive uh, or girlfriends. And yet they're in, you know, they have to hear over and over again about how it's only men who are ever abusive. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's amazing to me. Like once you go into down the rabbit hole or whatever it is, and you see the, 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 our culture from the other side. And every time you turn on the news, there's yet another story about, you know, whatever, the terrible problem of cat calling and how it represents, you know, the, the, the deep misogyny of North American culture and what needs to be done about it and, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's astounding. So, so now I sort of feel like, um, with my videos anyway, that my, my role is to at least to say to young men that you're not crazy. It, our culture is, is actually crazy. All right, so let's talk about this crisis in masculinity. Uh, is, that, is that the right way to phrase it, do you think? Yeah, sure, yeah, that's fine, that, yeah. That, that'll mm -hmm. work, okay. Mm -hmm. That there do seem to be so many men who, as you said, they don't hate women. Yeah. They, they, they don't hate themselves, they don't, they, but they're sort of wounded and confused. Yeah. I see these people often at Jordan's shows, mm -hmm. and I don't even mean that, that the shows are filled with these people. There's just people that are kind of confused. Yeah. Their, their roadmap is a little screwed up and mm -hmm. he's kind of helping them get back on the road. I don't, he doesn't even talk about gender that often or, yeah. or any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, his broader message of clean up your room mm -hmm. and get your stuff together, fix yourself before you fix the world, yeah. That seems to be uh, mm -hmm. a message that these people are hearing. Yeah. This crisis, are you able to really figure out how widespread it is? I mean, I know you're, get, you're getting sort of emails and you're putting up your video series and all that, but like, can you really tell like how much of this has just sort of gone across culture? Because it does seem to sort of be the, the beginnings of the next culture war. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, it's, it's hard to say exactly. I mean, certainly at the university, there's been a tremendous decline in men attending. Net women now dominate in numbers at pretty well, you know, every university, at least in North America, and I, I assume it's true in Western Europe as well. Now, there might be lots of reasons for that, but one has to assume that a, at least a part of the reason is that young men feel that there isn't a place for them at the university. Um, and it, the relentless man blaming and man shaming that goes on there has got to have something to do with that, I would think. Um, and there are a, a number of reports certainly that I've read recently indicate that in a, a whole bunch of other ways, men are just not doing very well generally either. There was a report that came out a few years ago called um, uh, Wayward Sons, it came out of MIT, um, two economists talking about how um, in a number of different metrics, um, whether it was skills acquisition, uh, real wages, um, just employment numbers, um, job status, men are falling behind women really shockingly. And, and then that's leading into all sorts of other social problems too. Men are not getting married because they're not in a position to be able to support a family. There are many other reasons why men are not getting married as well. And so then that means that um, more and more um, women are, are raising their children outside of marriage. And, and then that 
often has very bad impacts for the boys in those single mom situations. Um, they, they, they tend to be the ones that are hurt most by uh, the lack of a father. And, and so, yeah, it certainly seems that there's some pretty widespread problems. Suicide, male suicide is something that um, a lot of people that I work with are very concerned about. Um, mental illness, uh, what they call failure to launch, meaning just a, a lot of young men feeling that there isn't anything for them in society. And so why even try to contribute anything to it at all. It does seem to be a pretty widespread problem from what people like Warren Farrell, who've studied the subject for years, certainly, and of course, Christina Hoff Summers as well. Are yeah, what, what are the reporting. tactics that you've seen work effectively to, if someone contacts you and you know they're, they're feeling all of the things that you've discussed, or not feeling them, they're experiencing yeah, they're all experiencing of these things. Them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have a sort of, uh, groundwork for how they can kind of get their lives in order mm -hmm. and, and fight some of this? Or, I mean, or it's I, really just, you're just making them aware. Yeah, I mean, I befriend them and and, uh, and I, I tell them that what they're feeling has a real basis. I mean, that part of the problem is that they're told that they their, their only problem is a sense of entitlement, mm -hmm. you know, which is the last thing that's true about men's experience today. So part of the thing is that, uh, I mean, I think many of the young men that write to me, it's not that they necessarily think they're the biggest victims in the world. It's that there is not even a smidgen of awareness that they would ever have anything to worry about. The sense that, you know, everything that they have, it's because they're so privileged. Um, so in so, a weird way, it's just, in, through that lens, it's like society, you should have everything. You should mm -hmm. feel great. Look, you've been handed everything, mm -hmm. but then society's continually making you feel like crap, yeah. which is like a completely double-edged sword yeah. because you're supposed to feel great. You feel mm -hmm. like crap. They're never yeah. giving you a chance to feel good because mm -hmm. there's nothing you can do yeah. to get yourself out of this. Yeah. And it's, it's I mean, I, I think it's a, it is a devastating social problem. Um, and again, yeah, I don't know the exact extent of the problem, but from what people who know and who have studied it more are certainly indicating that it is a growing problem. And, and um, you know, in the circles that, that I sort of um, pay attention to, you know, there's this movement called MGTOW, which I I'm, I'm, know you know about, and um, of men who are just have decided... What's the acronym breakdown to? Uh, men going their own way. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm not an expert on, on MGTOW, certainly um, women, <laughs> it would be funny for, for, uh, for, for them to think of me pronouncing on it, I'm sure, but, um, and there can be different reasons, and, and you know, in the, most, in the broadest definition, I think it's just men saying, look, I'm going to focus my life around my own um, pursuits, and I'm not going to focus my life around a woman. And these men tend to think that actually that's a trap that a lot of men fall into, is, is making everything about a woman. Um, and then you can get, you know, really, you can be destroyed. If, you, if the woman you happen to focus your life around is crazy or malevolent in some way, she can destroy her man um, by making a claim of abuse. He can find that um, the marriage he built, the home that he built, the children that he fathered, all can be taken away from him. His life can be destroyed, his business can be taken away, his reputation can be ruined, you know, all of those things. And, and so there's so much risk to these young men in these involvements that a lot of them are just deciding uh, it's safer not to, not, you know, not to risk anything. But I think there's a more general thing too, it's just, um, and you know, it has to do with that sense that every day, in some way, some of these men are beginning to feel like their society just doesn't even like them. It's not even that they're expendable, which I think most men who have studied the situation of men throughout history would say that's always been the case. Men <laughs> right, have men always been, yeah, men are the ones that go to war. Why? To, to protect the women. So this idea that all of human history is about male power and privilege and, and men abusing women, um, you know, these men say it's actually the exact opposite. Um, women have always been the ones who are precious in society, particularly in Western society, you know, with chivalry and everything else. Um, so, you know, that was always the situation. But expendability is one thing, but to be actually despised 
by your, your, your society and told that there's nothing good about you, that even your sacrifices aren't good enough, and yet you're still supposed to make the sacrifices, mm -hmm. but they'll never, you're, you'll never get any, any kind of public acknowledgement yeah. of that. Well, that's why I always say it's bowing forever. Yeah. That's what they mm -hmm. want. There yeah. is no penance. Right. There is no reclamation mm -hmm. here. It's, it's, a per, it's a perpetual stay there. Yeah, you can never purge your toxic masculinity, no matter what you do, unless you die, I guess, you know, rescuing somebody, but, uh, but <laughs> even they then. They figure out a way to. Yeah, 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 I mean, and then that gets flipped over, and then that's an example of, you know, patriarchal, you know, objectification of women or something. I mean, it really is, like, it, it's sick when you, when you listen to, I mean, I've read, like, lately, so many studies. One about, um, this was by a, a, a feminist sociologist in sociology, is really, I mean, it's just crazy. This was a woman um, who has done work with the homeless in Ontario. And her whole shtick was about how um, even amongst the homeless, uh, certain um, ideas associated with hegemonic masculinity could still be found in, in she interviewed various homeless men. And, and, you know, the fact that the homeless are overwhelmingly men right away, you know, should, you know, yeah. po it points to something. Doesn't it say something about male privilege in our society that you, yeah, you walk around the streets of Ottawa, you, you almost never see a homeless woman. You yeah. see a lot of homeless men and a lot of homeless white men as well as homeless Inuit men. Um, anyway, so she had done this work with, with homeless men and, and, uh, and she interviewed them, and yeah, she found that either either they were lamenting the loss of their hegemonic masculinity, or they were even so trying to assert their hegemonic masculinity in various ways. I mean, it was just, it was truly crazy. Uh, it had nothing to do, and, and she actually recommended at the end of the article that programs working with these men should perhaps you know, help them to wow. whatever, renounce their hegemonic masculinity. There was another article. That, that's obviously their number one problem. Yeah, that's their number one problem. I mean, it's just unbelievable. There was another article I read just recently saying that, that programs to um, encourage men to be responsible fathers. This was, I think, these were American programs I think she was studying. Um, that such programs also reinforce patriarchal because they reinforce this idea that um, you know men have an important role to play as fathers. And she actually said that this was a typical reassertion of patriarchal thinking, in that the implicit assumption was that women, uh, that mothers aren't um, sufficient for their children. So I mean, she basically outright said that that children don't need fathers and fathers ha have no necessary role in their children's lives. Um, There's so a lot of scientific evidence that that's not that's correct. That's not correct, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that it's deeply damaging to children. Do you sense that there's a movement now for women, and I think you'd probably be included in this, but that young women that are of looking to get married and in their you know late teens, early 20s, that they want men back. So I can only give an anecdotal example of this, but I have a lot of single, straight female friends that have their lives together, have jobs, take care of themselves, et cetera, et cetera. And we have this like running joke that I don't know virtually any straight men like that. I know a lot of gay guys that seemingly have their lives together and that are doing all of those things. And that's probably, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. That's sort of kind of, it's a sidebar, but it's sort of interesting but that they want there to be men to find. And it's become like a running joke for me, like, I, I don't know where they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, I think those women are gonna have to start asking why it is that they're not there. And yeah. as some of the, the reason I would say is precisely that um, they're just not, they're not willing anymore to, to be there because it isn't possible. I mean, obviously there are lots of men who are still willing to take on responsibility and be the achievers and all of that. But I think there has been sort of a general, um, a lot of men are, are disgusted with the, the paucity of options that are, that are offered to them. Uh, and they feel that, um, you know, it's just, there, there are too many risks for them 
involved and doing the things that they might have once wanted to do. Um, and I think a lot of men are, are damaged too from the, the decades of relentless propaganda, anti-male propaganda.